All right, today is an important day in e-biking because something important got announced. It solves one of the fundamental problems of e-bikes, especially e-mountain bikes, which is the weakness of the drivetrain. You, you hear me complain about this all the time, but I'm patient. I know it's coming, it just takes time. So what got announced today is a new technology from a company called Pinion. It is a motor and a drivetrain merged into one box. So it sits on your bottom bracket and it does all those functions and it solves a whole wealth of problems. Okay, what is the problem we're trying to solve? The problem we're trying to solve is the motor and the drivetrain and that chain in between is a whole mess for e-mount bikes right now. The main reason is the systems were not really designed for the power of an e-bike and the human uh, putting load on the chain and this cassette. You know, people are still trying to save weight on these things, but really we're just wearing them out, we're breaking them, we're getting stranded uh, out there. And what we really need is a more robust system, a more robust system and even a more integrated system. And that's what Pinion has. So what they have is a motor and transmission built into one. And then they have a, a, a drive, a simple drive, a belt drive or a chain drive that's, that's driving the rear wheel. So simple, uh, less weight. So I'll tell you about, about the advantages. Uh, and what that does is, is now the, the weakest point of the system uh, it's all encased uh, and it's swimming in oil so it doesn't wear out as fast it doesn't break in the middle of the trail but first let's talk about pinion who is pinion and why are they the right company to do this so early so pinion has been developing these internal bottom bracket gearbox systems for the last 10 years and they do a very good job german company german uh, manufacturing high quality expensive stuff but it hasn't quite caught on. It hasn't caught on because of several reasons, especially here in the US. You know, it's tough to get a bike or a dealership here that will service those things. But the main reasons are, one, they have drag, additional drag compared to a well-lubed chain and cassette system. And in analog biking, traditional mountain biking, that's kind of important. You know, it's like, it's like your bearings are shot or you haven't lubed your chain in a month. So quite significant. Another reason is they're heavier. They're, you know, the, it's a lot of gears, it's quite a bit heavier, and on a 20 pound bike, you know, all that, all that, an extra pound uh, or extra two pounds is significant. Uh, another reason is you have to have your frame built around the motor. The interface uh, was not compatible with any bottom bracket, so you, you, couldn't change, you couldn't change gearboxes or transmission systems once you selected the pinion. Um, other reasons, you know, you couldn't shift under load. Uh, the shifting was kind of funky with two cables and a grip shift. And, you know, it was expensive as well. You know, about 2,000 bucks is what it added to a bike. So now it really feels like it was an engineering solution waiting for the right application. The e-bike looks to be the right application for this thing because the e-bike has a whole mess of problems when it comes to drivetrains. The most important of which is it's, the thing just can't handle the load and it just wears out so quick. Uh, other things is that the railer hangs low, you're on in a lot of rugged terrain, and you can't even back wheel. You notice how your, your derailleur always catches a lot of sticks uh, <laughs> and debris, and you can't get them out, you have to get off your bike. That's because you can't, you can't free wheel, uh, or you can't reverse your cranks. It doesn't, it doesn't turn your chain backwards and spit out that debris. You have to get off and, and do it. Even lubing the chain is a little harder on an e-bike because you can't spin backwards uh, when the bike is just on, on a... On, a, uh, on the ground. So this solution that they have is a nine speed or a 12 speed system made into a motor, their own motor, and it has more consistent shifts, either 18% jumps in between gears or 24% jumps on the nine speed. And it has a wider range. It has about a 600% range for the 12 speed. Mind you, this thing only has 500% range and that's enough, right? So it's got that. The, one of the problems that they had was you couldn't power shift. Uh, you couldn't shift under power. You really had to let off. Uh, just like in a car, you had the clutch uh, car in the old days, uh, five speeds. Uh, this, this system, it, it controls the motor. So it knows when you're, when you're shifting. So it backs off the motor for a little bit. Uh, it, you should back off on your, on your pedaling. But if you don't, the, the motor actually knows, hey, where is your dead spot in your pedaling? Like right here. Um, yeah, let's shift there. <laughs> uh, 
So it, it solves some of that problem. The other few problems were like you need a custom frame for, 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 for this pinion motor. Uh, all e-bike motors have that issue. All mid-drive motors have that issue. Uh, cost, uh, weight is not so much of an issue, uh, but it turns out this, the motor is so heavy on a traditional bike uh, that there's actually some savings to be had when you integrate these two, you know, same case and, and whatnot. Uh, the other thing is maintenance. Maintenance on a, uh, an e-bike, I lube my chain every single ride, and th these guys are saying, hey, uh, lube it once a year. In addition to this, it has a lot of features that I'm seeing. Uh, one is it has something called uh, pre-select pre shift, meaning you're coasting, you're speeding up, or you're slowing down. Instead of you having to pre-shift uh, to match the gear when you pick it up, the motor uh, and the transmission will know that. It knows your speed, it knows what gear you're in, and it knows when it's time to pedal, you're in the wrong gear. So it'll just shift on its own. Uh, it doesn't even have to uh, spin the motor. It's just like a car. <laughs> uh, you, it, it just drops it in gear, so when you pick it up, it's in the right gear. So that could be a godsend, that could be a real advantage. Uh, the other one is, you know, when you stop, uh, it pre-shifts like to a, 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 a low gear, but you can pre-select that gear uh, or start select uh, that gear that it always goes on when you are stopped. So some specifics about the system. Uh, it's a little heavier than the, the, what do you call that? The Shimano e, EP8, the, the Bosch and, and the Bros from, from on the Levo. Those are about 3.1 kilograms. This one's 4.1 kilograms or nine pounds, okay? So a little heavier, but it does save weight. Uh, now you, you don't have the weight of the derailleur, the weight of the, the cassette. Uh, you also have a stronger body, uh, wheel on there because you don't have that big dish on, on the wheel. Uh, shorter chain as well, right? So I think it equals out or maybe you, you, you come out ahead. Uh, and you don't need to be buying these <laughs> expensive cassettes that wear out, you know, just to save a few grams here and there. It's, uh, it's, it's all in there in, in heavy duty steel gears. The battery they're announcing is pretty groundbreaking. They have a 480 watt hour, 720 watt hour, and 960 watt hour. And they even have an extender system available for, for bikes to use. The details too, they look all pretty dialed. They have a, a remote, they have different displays and they have a remote uh, the, uh, with a display on it, which is I think the ultimate solution or one of the ultimate solutions for information and stealth. They have an iPhone app that's quite advanced uh, and they have a lot of partners. Uh, it's all about the partners, who the bike partners are. Unfortunately, these are European partners and I'm not impressed too much with, with these guys, Bulls Bike, Rottweil, Simplon. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of commuter applications for this as well, okay? Now the motor itself, uh, I talked about the battery, the motor itself is 85 newton meters uh, when compared to traditional motors. Uh, and so it's about the same, uh, apparently. So weaknesses, I would say the biggest weakness is availability and compatibility. Uh, someone would have to choose this, build a bike around it, and it's gonna take a while. Uh, maybe, I don't know, six months in Europe, uh, might be sold out. And then in the US, you know, don't be looking for this in 2024. You know, maybe, maybe 2025. Some US manufacturers have to pick up this motor really for, for this to be available to us in the US shores. And it's gonna be expensive, you know? Uh, but e-bikes are, are, you know, they have an expensive price tag anyway because that motor and battery system, you know, add quite, quite a lot, about $2,000 to this. Maybe this will add $3,000, so that would be quite acceptable. And another weakness is drag, you know, you know, gearbox systems bathed in oil. That 6% drag that we talked about, it's not going to go away, but it'll be masked. You know, you, you will hardly notice it. Who cares, right? So, but it will affect you in, in battery range. So we'll, when we get these systems, we'll test their battery range, but you know, not a big deal because you have 480, 720, 960 extender batteries. Uh, this system looks all there. And honestly, it looks like a version two product, even though it's, it's the first generation of uh, this pinion system. So I'm excited, but really there's a lot more coming. You know, Shimano came out with their, with their entry. Uh, this is one of, of many. Uh, and whoever's, you know, can deliver uh, in a, a cost-effective solution the quickest, you know, I think will will gain critical mass quickly. But it's a cool day for e-bikes and e-mountain bikes. Thanks a ton, everyone.